You're now listening to Wealthy Sisters Radio Show. You're now listening to Wealthy Sisters with Deborah Hartman. Can I say again to you, great morning, great morning, great morning. Welcome to Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view. I'm Deborah Hartnett, your hostess, and I am so super excited. I know I said that last week, but for real, for real, this time today, I'm ecstatic, y'all, about this show that we're going to have today. So what I need you to do right now, first and foremost, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, text, Facebook message, tell everybody they want to be on this show today because I have a special treat for you. When I tell you, you know that our purpose here at Wealthy Sisters is twofold. First, we must make sure that we provide that inspiration and encouragement. And y'all know we really need that today, right? We do. We really do. We need to know that there is more good than negative out here today. And it's so important also for us not only to provide you inspiration and encouragement, but to also provide you with the tools, the resources, the practical knowledge that you can apply to your life right now and your business to have that explosion that God has intended for you to have. And secondly, extra important, we must provide that platform to edify, acknowledge, and say thank you to the sisters for doing big things and our brothers too. But it's so important today because you know, if you look in our media, you would think that we are one dimensional, right? But we're here to let you know that we're multi-dimensional, we're super talented, and today's guest is going to be another proof of that fact right there today. So I'm telling you, I have the privilege to introduce to you a lady that I mean I'm telling you what a blessing I met her recently at this phenomenal Black Wall Street. You guys heard me talk a little bit about it last week, and I'm going to talk more about it. But it's the new Black Wall Street in Atlanta. They turned this Target into this incredible museum. I like to call it a museum. It's a place you can shop and all of that as well. But this hidden treasure is right here, there at the new Black Wall Street, and she's here on Wealthy Sisters today. So you guys stay tuned. Here's a visual of who our special guest is today. She is none other than the queen herself. I'm telling you, royalty is with us. Queen Aniva Aniva. She is the founder of the African Textile Museum. You got to get that. This woman has traveled all over the world. And when you go into that museum, I'm telling you, I cannot wait for you to see it. All types of fabrics from all over the world that she's designed from mud cloth to kente, all these beautiful royal gowns. I mean, I'm telling you, it is a sight to see. What a treasure to have you here with us today, Sister Queen Aniva. Aniva, welcome to Wealthy Sisters Radio with The View. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you so much, my queen, for inviting me to your show. This is a privilege, an honor, and I, I really, really do appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm telling you, the honor is all mine. I really value your time. I value your experience. And I don't take it lightly that you saw something, to, you know, to make you say, yes, I'll come on your show today. Because again, that's what we want to be able to continue to provide that, that rich content, rich value to our community and to the world. Well, I could not help but to say, yes, you are a very beautiful spirit. When I met you, I was certainly impressed by your energy and your, you know, just the whole vibe that you carried and the hug that you gave me was unforgettable. <laughs> I know, much. right? Even in the middle of a pandemic, we can't help it. I'm telling you, right. you know, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I like to say, and I know this is your first time here on the show and we pray that it is not your last, Absolutely uh, but, not. but de definitely so. 
Uh, what we like to do here, our audience, we like to take that time, I like to say, to find out those ingredients that went into the recipe, the beautiful recipe that we see today that you are. And so if you don't mind sharing with us a little bit about your background, or what, you know, what made you start this journey? And definitely, if you'd like to share more about Queen Aniva, I'd love to know how that name came about because it's so befitting of who you are as well. Well, first of all, uh, I, I have been on this journey for many, many years. As a matter of fact, it started in high school. I was oh, the president wow. of the Black Student Union. <laughs> and I was responsible for creating cultural events for us to mm -hmm. connect with our culture. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, I wanted us to dress African. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about in the 70s, late 70s. And, you know, it wasn't much in uh, America except the daishiki and the daishiki yeah. dresses, you know. So <laughs> I went on this quest to find affordable clothing that the students could buy. And mm -hmm. living in Chicago, uh, it wasn't a whole lot, but there was one sister mm -hmm. in Chicago on 63rd and Cottage Grove, and she had a shop called Yuhuru, which you know means beautiful people in Swahili. Mm -hmm. And I went into that store and it changed my life. I saw fabrics mm -hmm. from all throughout Africa, and none of which we could afford. <laughs> so I said to the sister, oh my God, these are so beautiful. This is the kind of stuff I've been looking for. Uh, oh, I'm in love, I'm in love. So she said, well, if you can't afford it, I will show you how to make it. If you come wow. here after school every day, I will teach you how to make it for yourself. And that was the beginning of my journey. I started going to Uhuru every single day and every day I went was a new textile experience because all of the merchants throughout Africa that were coming into the United States would bring mm -hmm. Euro, her name was Euro Johnson, these amazing mm -hmm. textiles. So as I started learning how to sew, I um, was being introduced to these amazing textiles. and. Over the years, I just continued that journey. And I started out making some daishikis, you know, with the big pocket in the front, with the hand yeah. in the middle. That we yeah. saw all good times. Yeah. We knew, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I started with that. And it just kind of morphed into what it is today. What mm -hmm. I started with uh, was the daishikis and stuff. But after I graduated, went to the Art Institute to learn fashion design and merchandising. I started making crowns. Now mm. these crowns was just to honor sisters who had done wonderful works like yourself. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. need to be crowned because I <laughs> started the crowning again at the museum. But I would just make these incredible crowns by hand mm -hmm. and it became a way of honoring our sisterhood. And what did you so, make them out of, if, if you I don't made mind me asking? Crystal. I made them out of uh -huh. uh, cords. I made them out of oh, pearls. Wow. I made them out of stones. I made them out of all kinds of trims and cords. And you've seen the donut I did for Dr. Dorothy Height. She made that mm -hmm. famous. And mm -hmm. uh, Susan Taylor was one of the first sisters I crowned. But I've crowned Rosa Parks, Winnie Mandela, uh, wow. Alfred Woodard. Angela Bass, I mean, so, Maxine Waters, Diane Watson, Karen Bass, so many of the sisters in the sisterhood and Senate and Assembly mm -hmm. and Congress. It was mm -hmm. my way of honoring these women. So mm -hmm. I started with the crowns and then the crowns got to be like, okay, I can't find anything to wear with this anymore. What am I supposed <laughs> to do? Just wear the crown. I said, no, no, you, we'll, we'll find some. No, I don't have anything. So then I started making gowns. So wow. I had the crowns to gowns. So I had a label called crowns and gowns. <laughs> <laughs> and so from the crowns and gowns, I did that for so, so many years. I then moved to Hollywood, <laughs> to <laughs> California, where the red carpet was waiting. And the crowns mm. were just well received. I opened mm. up a shop in Lamert Park Village, 
in uh, no, that village. Uh, Baldwin yeah, Hills. they're historical. I had my showroom for over 28 years in Lamar mm. Park Village. So mm. at Lamar Park Village, again, I learned about all these amazing textiles, more and more textiles coming into the country, more and more merchants bringing me textiles because I've been using African textiles as my centerpiece for my mm -hmm. whole career. This is mm -hmm. not something I just started. This is something mm -hmm. I started, say, in 1977, mm -hmm. and I am mm -hmm. still doing the same work. So as I uh, morphed into learning about all these textiles, my heart desire was to move to Africa. So in, in 2007, you know, after the downturn and all the things shifted, I'm like, you know mm -hmm. what? I am out of here. I'm going to the motherland. <laughs> Where did you go? Huh? <laughs> Where did you go was the first country that you... I went to you... Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> the giants of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Nigeria and that is where I received my crown. That is where wow. I received my crown um, uh, as queen uh, called mm -hmm. Olori in Africa mm -hmm. uh, when I mm -hmm. married King Sunny a day. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my true crown uh, before I was known as the queen of design. But then <laughs> it, it was further uh, solidified uh, through my marriage. So uh -huh. my journey has been extensive throughout Africa. I traveled into the areas where the actual artisans were making the textiles. So I saw the processes. I went mm -hmm. to Nikkei Art Center and learned how to make indigo. I went to Ghana to, to try to learn how to make the kente cloth, but only uh -huh. men make kente cloth in Ghana. So I Is did have right? a chance to learn how to stamp the indigo symbols and do some other batiks. I went to Mali and I studied in Bogola, uh, in, uh, 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 Boga, for Bogolan, which is, Bogolan is mud cloth. It's, Bogolan means made with earth. So I studied down there with the cultural mm -hmm. affairs director, Madam Thom, and she taught me how to make mud cloth. So I would go, I would work with the brothers to make my own patterns and stencils. And then we'd go by the sea and get the mud because the minerals are very rich by the water. Because, you know, mm -hmm. with the mud, you want it to be really rich with minerals. So we mm -hmm. would go by the water and we would just get cans and cans of mud. And, you know, we would let the mud ferment for a while and we use mud to paint the cloth. And so I'm learning these processes. I'm like, man, mud to make fabric? So wow. we would paint the cloth with the mud and then we would lay it out in the sun for four to five days to bake. The melanated mud, the minerals in the mud and the sun does a nature dance that permanently stains the cloth. So that is why it's called Mud Claw. So that was an amazing journey. I spent about a month in, um, in uh, Bamako, Mali. Bamako, that's what I was trying to remember, Bamako, Bamako. Mali. And uh -huh. it was an amazing journey. That shifted me into other countries. I went to Cote d'Ivoire to meet with the brothers who do the incredible Corogo cloth, making pictures with mud. I went over to mm. the Zaire where the brothers and sisters are making kuba cloth from a palm tree leaf. A now, leaf how is that done? Tree. <laughs> the leaf, how a is that done? Of a tree. Oh. Is, is the um, Corogo, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the kuba cloth is made from uh -huh. a palm leaf from a palm tree called raffia. I'm sure you've seen raffi. It looks like straw. It looks like yes. wheat, but it's not. Okay. It's a leaf okay. from a tree. And wow. every single thing is made from that leaf. So as you travel throughout Africa and you learn all these different processes and you see the the indigo being made from the indigo mm -hmm. furger tree where we cut up the, the leaves, the barks, the branches and boil it and put all of these additives in it to make it really rich. And it mm -hmm. looks like a dirty green when you make the, the dye. But when you stick your fabric into the dye and the air hits it and the sun kisses it, bam, it turns blue, indigo blue. 
is I call it the magical indigo fir tree. So these. So is that and and I don't want want to interrupt you, but this is fascinating to me. I'm a visual person, so yes. I'm just seeing you doing this. So with the, the 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 leaf that looks like the palm tree, you're saying once you take this and you put it. In Once the you sun. get the leaf, we dry uh -huh. it out, we beat it, we pound it, and we strip it into these tiny little threads. What kind of powder is it? What, it's is not it, it's powder. Just... It, it, oh, it's... it's actually a dried leaf. A dry, uh, right. I thought you said you beat it. Leaf. Once uh -huh. it's dry, you can take it and make it as thin as a thread. Oh, wow. You can just strip it and strip it and strip it. And so once mm -hmm. that's done, we had to mm -hmm. go to the brothers, and they weave this long panel. And then wow. the women's job is to decorate. So we will uh -huh. take that same leaf and we would dye it. And uh -huh. then we do embroidery on the patterns. We cut it out, inlay the fabric back into the kuva cloth. And mm -hmm. each tribe has its own way, its own technique and style of making kuva cloth. So when you come to the museum, you'll see all these different tribes uh, who mm -hmm. have made kuva cloth from the leaf. You will mm -hmm. see kente cloth from Ghana, which is made from cotton, mostly some silk. But the woman's only job and concerns with the kente is securing the cotton, spinning it, seeding it, and turning it into a thread. Then we dye it many colors. Then we take mm -hmm. those threads and hand it over to the brothers again, and <laughs> then weave the kente cloth. Weaving. Only men weave kente cloth. This is a and why is that? It's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a sacred process that okay. has been going on for generations and generations. It is only passed down from the father to the son. If you're wow. not in the weaving cartel, you do not learn how to make a <laughs> cloth. So it was just wonderful learning all of these processes. And of course, being in Nigeria, working with all of the weavers, uh, watching how they make a shoke. These mm -hmm. women are so amazing. They they weave strings and, and metallics and all mm. kinds of stuff into the shoke and the patterns, the master mastery of doing this a shoke is mm -hmm. incredible. Then I went over to Ethiopia. They have this incredible shimmer cloth that they make hand woven. I used to use that when I started doing my clergy collection. Uh, when I was making the rose for the bishops and the ministers and, mm -hmm. you know, here in, here in Atlanta, Dr. Barbara King was mm -hmm. one of my biggest clients. I, I was her designer for over 25 years wow. and I made most of her robes and, um, many of the bishops that, you know, you know, I probably made some robes something for them, for uh, them. The right. Price family in, in Los Angeles, Fred and Betty Price. They were my, some of my biggest clients and on mm -hmm. and on and on so mm -hmm. the african textile museum was a natural it just evolved from my love for africa mm -hmm. my love for the textile as you see i'm wearing now this beautiful embroidered art from ghana look at this yeah. all done with needle and thread i know i don't know if you can see the whole thing i can see back. that all wow needle and thread all embroidered art so these are arts and sciences that Africa gave to the world. We mm -hmm. created hand woven, beading, dyeing, and embroidery. All mm -hmm. the massive sciences that have evolved the entire fashion industry started first in Africa. It Even started there. The patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, we created geometrics and the numeral system and all of that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that we created all the patterns, stripes, plaids, polka dots, herringbones, tweeds, you name it. It was first us smearing uh, leaves and flowers with pigments and, and berries and juices on our bodies. It was called body adornment. That body was, before, adornment. That was uh -huh. before body tattooing. That was before scarification. It was just us smearing colors on our body to create patterns. And so you know the competition got fierce. Right. Because the patterns... <laughs> kind of was your point of attraction for the opposite sex. <laughs> you know, imagine all of these amazing patterns. That I can only doing. imagine what you went down know. with that. <laughs> it's like, oh, she got five lines. Yeah, Watch I'm this. I'm going to have 10. <laughs> 
<laughs> but let me, I'm glad you talked about this. I mean, I hate to interrupt you. I really do. No, but I do. Ha I just have to ask you those, the dyes. You talked about um, you all being experienced there, seeing them use the different dyes that make the different colors. And yeah. you just mentioned berries. Like, what are some of the other things like they use? Because indigo. To, curry, okay. Curry. Uh, yeah. All of the, beets. All I imagine beets. Are, yes. Exactly. Yes. Uh -huh, Anything uh -huh. that had a color that was growing, and you know, everything grows in Africa. Yes. To make products. We even use raffia to make the roofs on the houses, to weave grass skirts. We, mm. we used to weave grass cord and fruit fibers. We mm. used to soak fruit fibers and strip them, the fibers off of the fruit and weave mm -hmm. that. That's mm. what we pop. And many of the uh, pygmy tribes were famous for that, which ended up being a lot of what the Philippines and the Asian uh, countries, you know, mm -hmm. benefited from. As mm -hmm. you know, all of our motifs have traveled throughout the world. There's nowhere that you can go. And I've been to pretty much a lot of places throughout <laughs> the world doing my research. Our motifs are all over the world. And you know, nothing is made without the pyramid, circle, and square. So nothing. anytime you see anything that's got a uh -huh. pyramid, circle, or a square in it, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when people tell me that, you know, Africans didn't do nothing, they didn't create nothing, we didn't cre do, you know, have anything to do Who with Who says that? Who I just say la that? la, <laughs> and the Africans say la la. What does that mean? All. Yeah. <laughs> and la la, what, what if you hear something, someone say that la la, what that means? Just you I just talk to me. Lie lie, lie lie. I got liar, you. <laughs> liar, liar. <laughs> Pants on fire. Lie, lie. <laughs> so it's been an amazing journey, sis. And so with my, you know, thinking about, okay, what is my legacy? Mm -hmm. What will I leave behind after all mm -hmm. of these years of doing this work? And mm -hmm. I was coming home from Africa. I, I had fallen asleep and I was in a deep sleep and I woke mm. up and spirit said, the African Textile Museum. I said, huh? Mm. What? The African Textile Museum. <laughs> well, I know the textile part, but where'd the museum part come from? <laughs> so I said, African Textile Museum. Wow. So I started doing research on how to create a museum. Mm -hmm. And it just started and took place. And I had my sisters on my back, one in particular, B.B. Angola, who helped me build the African Textile Museum. Every single thing that you see in oh. that museum, B.B. and I carried it in there. And wow. then uh, we had a gentleman, Hernando, who came and helped us to hang things and, you know, create our trees and all of that. But it, it's sis if i could tell you how many people i've had over twenty thousand people to come through the museum since october so you since imagine, october since october so now you let me can imagine how many people every single day are coming wow. to the museum but you know what this is probably the most rewarding thing i have ever done in my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to see the Why? children come in uh -huh. And when I uh -huh. when, when my clients come in, I say, "Welcome, family. Welcome to the <laughs> African Textile Museum. This is where you learn about all the fabrics that you see here from Africa that are made from leaves and flowers and trees." Mm -hmm. They say, "Huh?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, <laughs> marinate on that for a minute." Yes. So as we walk them through the museum, I explain to them, "This is made from cotton. This is made from a leaf from a tree. This is made mm -hmm. from mud." And our newest exhibit that we just got in February, February 26th to be exact, from Uganda. Mm -hmm. Uganda was the first African nation to mm -hmm. respond to the accordion call that I sent out. I sent a letter to every embassy of all the African nations asking them to populate and sponsor their exhibit in our museum. And Uganda stepped up. And they One stepped up. sister, Margaret Kafaro, she said, mm -hmm. we want to be a part of Niva. We want to do this. This is very important. Uh -huh. This is uh -huh. much. We want to share it. 
So Uganda came and they came strong with three presidential cabinet members with them, including the wow. ambassador, the minister of uh, tourism, and uh, we had the uh, agriculture and the second hand to the president, the secretary. <laughs> They mm -hmm. came and they brought their national treasure to our museum and they shipped it in. They they had a top designer to design uh, outfits using their textile. And guess what? Their textile is the oldest textile in Africa. And wow. guess what? It's made from the bark of a tree. Oh, that's the one when you walk in. Yes. Uh, and it's right to On the left. The pedestal, the lip yes. Pedestal. Yes. Everything that you see in that exhibit mm. is made from the bark of a tree. Wow. It's amazing. The bark is cut off the tree with a knife. Then, once the bark has been released from the tree, we don't just leave the tree. We put cow manure on the tree to heal the wounds, the incisions. Uh -huh. Then it's wrapped in a banana leaf. The, the, the tree leaf is. Uh -huh. cultivates the tree so that it can grow more bark. Wow. Now, the sister who designed the exhibit, Jose Handu, from uh, London, is incredible. You should see the work that she's done. Mm -hmm. She's been doing mm -hmm. sustainable textiles and, and, mm -hmm. and, and working with bark cloth. She's from Uganda, but she's working in London. They, mm -hmm. you got to commission her to do the entire exhibit. We, she wove it, she beat it, she dyed it. She created mm -hmm. all these textures and colors and mm -hmm. masks mm -hmm. and bags and fascination hats and you name it, pillows and rugs. So you'll see all of this in the exhibit that Uganda has called Bark Cloth to the Roots. <laughs> wow, I like that Bark Cloth to the Roots. Let me ask you this. Because I, we always talk about um, having the vision here. This is primarily for business owners. Yes. Our show is directed to that, women business owners. And a lot of times we're afraid to, you know, in general, people in general, when we get an idea and we have that unction in our spirit and knowing that we should be doing something, but we don't know how it's going to come together we just, you know, freeze, right? But I'm listening to you talk about how you woke up and you heard Spirit say African Textile Museum. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Now, I, you know, it almost sound like this was some years ago when you got this idea and you maybe built it somewhere else. But I also know the, that you're in the new Black Wall Street, and that just opened last fall. And so this sometimes- happened. All of uh -huh. this happened within, <laughs> within the last two years. I came up with the concept two years uh -huh. ago. It uh -huh. took me a year and a half to get the trademark. To get the so trademark. I didn't want to release it until I got right. the trademark because, you know, I knew that this was going to be a powerful piece. So I said, let right. me take care. Do my Slow business, and do it do right. Trademark, get, you know, uh -huh. get our nonprofit status. And so those things took time. And then I had a beautiful sister friend that I was working with in this company. I was doing some work with this company that I've been working with in Nigeria, uh, uh, for many, many years uh, with mm -hmm. the Aronos, Emmanuel and Oge, they're doing fabulous work in DC. I mean, just mm -hmm. incredible work. I used to be their Goodwill ambassador in Africa. So we've been working together many, many years. They hired this sister, Denise Mitchum, and she's from Jamaica. And we met there. And uh, my my she had asked our boss actually to come and meet Mr. Allen. Uh -huh. and he was very busy. He was very busy. He said, Aniva, you go. You you go and meet Mr. Allen and, you know, be my ambassador and check it out and see what it is. So when I went there and I met Mr. <laughs> Allen and I saw his vision, I immediately said, oh, my God, I need to be right here with you to mm -hmm. help you build this. 
Mm-hmm. And so when I first introduced myself and gave him my car for the African Textile Museum, he just looked at the car like, okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> thanks, threw it in his pocket. <laughs> but then I had a friend who also worked with Denise at our company who was doing the Art Avenue and he was populating Richard Jordan, who was populating the Art Avenue. And I mm-hmm. said, Mr. Jordan, you know, he, I was actually introduced to Richard through Niba D, who I had worked with many, many years, Essence Festival and what have you. And Nee said, this brother's in charge of the Art Avenue. Talk to him. I put together a five-star PowerPoint presentation about wow. the Textile Museum. And I asked Mr. Allen, would he present it to Mr. I asked Mr. Jordan, would he present it to Mr. Allen? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he was very busy, you know, working on his project and, you know, he just didn't have a whole lot of time. So I kind of asked Richard, would he be my ambassador (laughs) and take (laughs) my presentation to Mr. Allen? And he did. And when he called, when I called him, I said, well, tell me, how did it go? What did he say? What do you think? He said, the word was fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. But see, and yeah. see, this is fabulous. the point. This is the point. This is the point that I'm sharing with all of my sisters today. Yes. Where there is vision, there is always provision. God That's is going right. to provide it. You yeah. had no idea. He's going to give you the provision. Yes. Right. Yes. You had no idea that that was coming yeah, together should. like that. That's it. And now look, look at what's happening. Listen, look at what's happening. <laughs> Mr. Allen, grab hold of my vision. Mm-hmm. And at first he said, I don't know what this is. I don't I don't understand it. I don't know. <laughs> here, take this space over here, this small space. So I said, yes, sir, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, whatever. I, I, I'm very grateful, sir. So as we were working on the project, mm-hmm. um, getting ready for it, Mr. Allen then had a revelation. And when he saw, when he met me, finally, mm-hmm. after everything kind of was a go he then met me and when i told him what i was trying to do he said this place is too small for that (laughs) so he ended up taking the space he had said i was to use and making a tea house out of it for his wife oh i saw the tea house to the bigger (laughs) space so he said you need this space you need this big space so I ended up with the biggest space in the entire new Black Wall Street for our wow. African Textile Museum. And guess what? Mr. Allen did not charge me a dime. Mm. He told me, I want to see proof of concept. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he watched me take that space that was totally empty when he gave mm-hmm. it to me. And he wow. saw me build that museum day by day, brick by brick, textile by textile. And when he came in there, he was like, wow. It is an incredible space. He you said, know, if- <laughs> I cannot believe what you've done to this space. Yes. And then when I took him on the tour and explained to him about this is made from a leaf, this is made from a tree, this is made, he said, what? <laughs> He said, this is a education, Aniva. Mm -hmm. This is not only just our culture, this is our heritage. This is our Mm -hmm. education. These are Mm -hmm. our forefathers and our foremothers. He said, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. He made me the destination for the new Black Wall Street. So when you come in the door, the first thing they say is, welcome to the new Black Wall Street. Be sure to check out the African textile. <laughs> I said, look well, at God. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, if you are just tuned in today, we are here on Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view with none other than Queen Aniva Aniva, the founder of the African Textile Museum. Yes, yes. Queen Aniva, I have to just let everybody know a few okay take a quick information break because all of this ties in together i need to let everybody know that wealthy sisters radio is also available on the black usa.news and we've got to let them know about you hold tight though i'm telling you i cannot wait to share with my brother donnie glover out of baltimore and yes he is he he has 
been talking about the Black Wall Street since I want to say the 90s, I know. Okay. I met him in the early 2000s. Yes. But he created this platform where there is tons of information. Let, let me just let our audience just get a, a good visual of what the Black USA does. I want everybody to go to that website, blackusa.news. There's yeah. all types of information relating to our community from politics, from business, from education or edu or as they say, edutainment. But there's also yeah. right, right. There there's education and I definitely want to make sure everybody supports it. I also have to let everybody remind them that you are listening to Wealthy Sisters. We we just relaunched our show, Queen Aniva. We had been on the air for seven years straight, blog talk radio, and I, I took a, 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 a hiatus, shall I say, yeah. but yeah. just yeah. like your friend. <laughs> yeah, just like they kept calling you. People wanted to know, when are we coming back? And and I had to, when I saw you, I knew I was like, yeah, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. We have to use this platform to share your stories because it's not being shared and i'd like everybody to know too that you know we have our book wealthy sisters this is our first one here we have the publishing company but there are stories powerful personal stories proving that you can do it too with yes. sisters like queen aniva and we're going to talk to you about volume two yes sisters like queen aniva because when you look at today Again, I have to really stress this right now. There is that atmosphere that only think that black women are, well, let me take it like this. Last month was women's history. And every time there's women's history, there's a video that circulates that women, black women, and they're all from the entertainment. Nobody from business, right? Yeah. Yeah. No one from different genres in yeah. business. And I want, I mean, I need our daughters to know that the sky and beyond is the limit as to what we can do. So we have sisters right. in here, Robin Wilson, you all are relate. She had her own line of cabinetry. She's in the green space. She was in the green space before everybody was. Now she was just on the, the show a couple of weeks ago. Now she just signed a line for a whole, uh, a deal for her own line of mattresses. Come She's on, in Macy's. God. See what I'm Thank saying? You, so these are the stories. You can get this on yeah. Amazon. But that is the purpose of Wealthy Sisters. And yeah. so, again, if you're just joining us, we're here with Queen Aniva. She is the founder of the African, African Textile Museum there at the New Black Wall Street. And I want to come back to you because... You 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 so you share so much, and I'm trying to take notes, but you should see my paper here. It's just all <laughs> over the place. But if I if I could backtrack just a little bit, share with us because there are a lot of us. I've traveled all over the world, but not to the continent yet. Oh, girl, not yet. We're getting ready to take our people to the continent. As a matter so of fact, this, this, what yes. we're doing right now at the New Black Wall Street uh, with mm -hmm. the African Textile Museum. Mm -hmm. We're in uh, the throes of looking for a title sponsor for the museum because, you know, I have a time limit on uh, the grace of Mr. Allen. He's right. We need to uh, do a proof of concept with the museum. It's and that's coming. That it's coming. 20,000 people. And you know what, sis? It's coming. Sisters and brothers are coming in mm -hmm. crying. Mm -hmm. They are praying for me. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. They are just holding their hearts when they mm -hmm. walk in the door. They are mm -hmm. connecting with the ancestors. I mean, mm -hmm. if I could tell you, I have testimony after testimony, and we're getting ready to create our YouTube channel with these testimonies. One year old, two years old, they touch mm. the clock. This is embroidery. You know, if I tell them, they, they know it instinctively because touch has a memory. It's in our DNA. Mm -hmm. But if I can tell you, the success story of this museum, it is one of the big, biggest successes that I've ever experienced. The mm. people have come, they are supporting us. We are listening to stories. I have people coming in every day 
that just bring other people. We've started this thing called the Ambassadors Club. So when you come, and yes. then, see what happened is somebody will come, then they'll come back and bring Auntie Bob. We'll bring somebody. And the nephews and the nieces and the husband brings the wife and the wife brings the children. So I may see the same person four or five times. So now when they come back, I'm Madam Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing me. Well, put me in that club because yeah, I want to use club. this platform and, to and be so <laughs> we're starting to do now is to create African experiences. So June 18th is going to be mm -hmm. our first African experience. We're going to have Experience Senegal hosted oh. by the United Nations Ambassador, Madam Mom. And uh. she's bringing all of the fashion, art, food, culture, mm. music of Senegal. And so Senegal is one of the countries we have in the museum. Mm -hmm. And so what we've decided is we want people to experience Africa. So you'll learn about the country. You'll see videos. You'll see mm -hmm. textiles. You'll see fashion show, the music, some food. And each country we plan to do that for. So not only that, we're creating tours. Wow. So if you want to go to Senegal? We have a tour going. You want to go to Uganda? We have a tour going. You want to go mm -hmm. to Ghana? We are starting tours to take people home because mm -hmm. people need to touch the soil of the motherland. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. once you put your feet on the mm -hmm. soil of your ancestors, mm -hmm. something changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I first touched the ground, when I first jumped off the plane, that's what I, I want to know about. Knees. And yes, I was so happy to be home, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. that's what happens when mm -hmm. you when you go to the motherland, sis, and see mm -hmm. what is happening. It changes your life. So mm -hmm. I invite all my sisters and brothers on this show to come to the African Textile Museum because we want to connect the dots for you. We want you to go back to the motherland. So come June 18th. We're gonna have a taste, uh, uh, experience Senegal, and the ambassadors series will be going on after that with new dates. On July 31st, we're hosting the National Medical Association, and we'll be doing a fashion show mm -hmm. featuring some of my newest collection. As you know, I'm a fashion designer by trade using indigenous African textiles. So all of these things will be happening, and I would love for wealthy sisters yes uh, to come and be a part of yes this because this is it, this is not a me project family this is a we yes it takes a village this really yes. does take a village and i'm so happy to be on your show today because when you came in with your spirit and then you told me about your television show wealthy sisters and invited me to be on it i could not help but to say yes and i'm overwhelmed with so much right I now just trying to keep up with the pace of the request we're even working on virtual tours for schools and everything so uh we've got sisters showing up volunteering you know i'm looking for my tribe my family i need help family yes <laughs> well that like, that is not a me project so we've started <laughs> And once you start, like you said, when he gives you the vision, he'll give you the provision. That's so right. So a lot of my sisterhood is showing up and showing out. They're coming in. They're saying, okay, I'm going to take this portion. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And that's how this thing is working because we are all working together. So join us at the New Black Wall Street. Come to the African Textile Museum and mm -hmm. see what God is doing and see your culture and see the blessings that Africa has given to the world through textiles, art, and culture. Wow, I tell you, well, I know the time is wrapping up here. It goes by so fast. Yes, the time went really fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and and I and I like I said, I know we your time. We appreciate you so much for coming on Thank you, and sis. just giving of yourself. Okay. And, and I want to encourage everyone, I put your website on the screen there, yeah. africantextilemuseum.org. Are they able to make donations at the site Absolutely. as well? We have okay. a donation portal on our, on our website. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, what we call a giving basket in the museum. As we give to you, we ask that mm -hmm. your heart is touched and you give back to us because we don't charge a fee to come to the museum. Because right. it is uh, education and we don't want to block the blessings of our sons and daughters being able to mm -hmm. just walk in and mm -hmm. see what, what they've given to the world. And you know what the kids say? Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> they, do. they cannot they do. believe the things that are made from leaves and flowers and trees. And we end it with, we don't have to kill nothing and nothing mm -hmm. has to die. Nothing we has to die. Everything from nature, and we use it to provide everything we need. And that's, and that's our history. Spirit. That's our culture. That's our history. Yeah. I mean, and my grandmother was recycling. Yeah, that. my. You know, my grandmother. I say all the time, she was recycling before everybody talked about recycling. Right. You know, when she was using sandwich bags for, you know, for the bread. And I mean, we had the bowls, the margarine bowls, or cereal bowls. Yes. You know, all yes. of, all of that. She yes. reused everything. So everything. that's a part of our our culture. It's not something that we should we should say that's what the other people are doing. That's that's something we you know we did and we do and what we're doing now is we have a gift shop in the mm -hmm. museum um, mm -hmm. that we sell fashions like what i'm wearing mm -hmm. made from the cloth made wow. from these different countries textiles some we mix with silk some we mix with linen wool leather mm -hmm. you know we're creating mm -hmm. we're being creative with this project and this is our way of uh, taking care of uh, our people that are helping. This is our way of keeping the museum going and updating and constantly curating textiles and bringing new textiles in. But I mm -hmm. want to make this appeal to my brothers and sisters in the continent. I am waiting for each and every nation. And we got 53 more to go because one showed up. This I'm asking you to make sure that you are a part of the African Textile Museum. It is time for us mm -hmm. to be a mm -hmm. beacon of hope, a beacon of light here in America, mm -hmm. to bring our sisters and brothers to the consciousness of who they are and what they've mm -hmm. given to the world. And mm -hmm. we at the African Textile Museum at the New Black Wall Street, we are doing the work to connect the dots to bring people home to Africa so I'm asking all the nations to come sponsor your exhibit and make it the exhibit that we dream for it to be. I can only do so much out of my pocket. I've done it all. I need you now to come in. It's not a whole lot that you have to give, but it is doing so much for the people. So I do ask that you support the African Textile Museum Help us continue to do the work that God has called us to do. Help us continue to educate our, our daughters and sons so that they will know that they gave something great to the world, many, many things to the world. And when you walk through this museum, it is an testament to the grace and the mercy of Almighty God giving me this vision, but mm -hmm. allowing it to, to, to be what it is through the support of Mr. Bill Allen at the New Black Wall Street, uh, Richard Jordan, Neba D, everybody at the Art Avenue. And I just want to say a big thank you to the family. Big thank you to all my sisters and brothers like you, Deborah, who showed up and saw it and joined forces and said, let's get the word out. Thank you, sis. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, it is it's all my honor. Thank you for your time and being here. And thank you for every, you know, every moment that you felt like you were alone. Every moment that you were, you, you had that vision when no one else could really see what you were talking about. I mean, I can only imagine, we did, we're gonna have to have you back, like I said, and get into more okay. time with, cause I can only imagine, you know, you're young in the seventies, going, bringing this yes. cloth and how people like, what do you want to wear that? And you get this and, oh, and you're, what's your family? Crazy African lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she gone to Africa, where is she? What's, and what is her name now? Like. She changed her name. I'm still calling Ruth Ann. That's why I know. You know, I can, I can, 
all those moments, all those yeah. things that you went through. So now everybody sees it. They're celebrating you now, but people don't know all of those, the journey, how you had to get your plane ticket. I could only imagine how, how you got to times. Africa, how many times. <laughs> how many times. So thank you to you thank for you staying the course. Yes. not giving in and staying driven and focused yes. and i know that it's coming i know that the yes. gifts are coming i know your yes. rewards are coming because that's oh, yes. how god I, is i've been invited <laughs> to to receive a few thank you so much yes I yes one um i received a couple for the opening of the uh bar club to the roots wow there Gave mm -hmm. me my day in Stonecrest, Queen Anita. Okay. Me day in Stonecrest. <laughs> uh, Byron Amos from uh, Atlanta City Council. Mm -hmm. I got a proclamation for the African Textile Museum signed by mm -hmm. all of the council uh, persons. Awesome. And uh, oh. we issued uh -huh. for bark cloth to the roots that I passed on to the ambassador who came so mm -hmm. they could mm -hmm. take it back home to know that we have this connection going here mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to have a public opening of the exhibit. We did the private one with the installation, the ribbon cutting, but mm -hmm. now I'm putting together a huge grand opening of the exhibit itself. Now that it's uh -huh. in, now that it is installed because I had it at that big uh, right. invitation grand so I right got about five thousand on our mailing list just from people <laughs> that came through the door signing up and each one is invited and so do come back madam ambassador yes yeah. you know it's that's yeah. automatic i just need to know the date to put it on the calendar okay, <laughs> for sure that out to you if you are on our newsletter if you signed up on our list and i believe you did if your name is on that list, you'll get a newsletter that chronicles everything that's going to be happening, all mm -hmm. of the tours that we're going to be running, all of the textile experiences. And we're going to start a textile treasure project where you can come and I'm going to have textiles from different countries. Then you can make your own textile. You can put together oh, your own elements. That's going to be so textile. neat. And the textile project is going to go into a huge quilt. So this is going to be a joint project. Oh, wow. it's amazing. Oh, guess what? I got to tell you this. You know, Juneteenth is coming up, right? Yeah, I guess that's what I was thinking. You said June 18th. I was like, that's and the day June before June. is You're right. Juneteenth. June. And guess what? Right. Uh, last week, Saturday, this past Saturday, uh -huh. I did a photo shoot with the oldest living heir to the Rosewood Massacre. What? And she is building a museum on the land as well as other businesses coming up and when i tell you this photo shoot changed her it changed me too because i mm. i created a queen mother and mm. i also crowned her that day but she's mm. going to be the queen in the parade and the photo mm. shoot that i did is going to be the poster for the parade for the parade and what guess what it was so impactful for her to mm -hmm. be dressed as a queen mother. I just got this incredible textile from Ghana mm -hmm. that is all embroidery. It's not mm -hmm. kente. It's done mm -hmm. by some master embroidered artists in, uh, mm -hmm. in the north. And mm -hmm. I draped her in that with her and 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 Baba G, the uh, jeweler for the new uh, for the Black Panther who did all the Black Panther jewelry. He made mm -hmm. her necklace and her crown. Oh, yes. I saw him there. Let uh, me yeah. tell you. She yes. Said, I am from this day on. <laughs> I'm not taking it. Address me as queen mother. <laughs> I'm not taking no mess. <laughs> she said, Anima, this changed my life. And guess what? We decided now because of that, that we're going to start implementing photo shoots for different people who want to be queens and kings in different yes. countries. For yes. For each country that we have represented in the museum, mm -hmm. you can have a photo shoot done, dressed as a king or queen of your, uh, you know, of your uh, selection, and we will do the photo shoot with our top photographer. That's and a brilliant idea. And we- 
but uh -huh. for your wedding, for your, you know, for your birthday, whatever you want to be queen for a day. Baby. Yep. Day, but you know, we yeah. will have the authentic crowns, the authentic textiles, the authentic traditional textiles and jewelry and all of it. So, well, well, I the photo shoot. I, my mind is going so fast here. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is my dear sister, Michelle. This oh, She's watching and she's so Michelle, excited. She's trying to find out where this is. And it's, Michelle, it's right here in Atlanta. It's in Stonecrest, Lithonia. It is yeah. the new Black Wall Street. You got to come down. But she just said, please excuse my typo. So excited to learn about Queen Aniva Neva. Beautiful you. and educational museum. I would love to volunteer my services in oh, God's will. You. In his way so i'm telling you she's a beautiful person oh, and then we need I just, to just come on down she will be there trust me she will and and she's down in florida but she oh, will make her God. way here yes, all right i got sisters coming from all over the place yes and another another thing i just thought of the sister gina page we got to reach out to her with african ancestry.com oh, have what? you met her I yet in because I have never done my African ancestry. Yes. I just sent in my African ancestry about two weeks ago. Did you, you use know, African ancestry? I'm getting ready to find out where my birth. The tribe. I right. All of Africa, but I want right. to know for sure because that's important. Well, that's something that you all can look at working together because, you know, the African ancestry is not like the others. I it's know. very it's detailed. And all that. Right. And they tell you specifically what tribe. So my thought was, hey, you could tell them what tribe they came from. They can take pictures from their tribe after they've done their test. Guess what? Yes. They have come in and they said, I'm from so and so. I'm from so and so. Yes. Wait a minute. Let me put your cloth on you. That's I, it. I said, you need to be incubated in this textile that came from That's the right. That's and right. That's right. I promise you, the people put on their textiles and they feel it. Some yes. people cry. Some people are like, oh my God, I can feel it. Yes. So that's something that we're already doing. I would love to that's meet with my sister at the African Ancestry because we have work to do. Because yes. once they do identify their birthright, then we're going to crown them in their glorious textile and create a beautiful photo shoot for them. So this is us all wealthy women working, wealthy sisters working together to bring about the change that has started. It's not going to stop until we no. get it said and done. That's right. That's right. Well, again, it has been a, 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 I mean, just an amazing pleasure having you on the show today. I appreciate you for your time, you know, your diligence, like I said, and just thank you so much thank for you. all that you will continue to do because yes. we know yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. We understand that. Yes. So thank you so much. Thank you. Continue to have the most amazing day, the most you. amazing right. week. And you'll be seeing me again real soon. Absolutely. <laughs> and when you come, I am certainly going to crown you, sis. That's, that's, that's God what bless you. Do. I want to put God a crown bless on you. that head. God bless you. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you. What a beautiful day. We're celebrating. This is the 10th day of our holy month of Ramadan. Right. And I Ramadan cannot even Kareem. think of a Thank you, Ramadan Kareem. Thank you it's so much. Pleasure. I could not think of a better way to spend it. So, sister, continue to have the most amazing week. Thank you. And y'all support the African Textile okay. Museum. Let me put her, her website up. Go ahead. You have one other thing you want to say? Help us, family. Write that check. Write that check, you know, even yes. if it's $10, $20, yes. whatever it is, it really will help me to continue to do the work because I tell you, it is a lot yet to be done. And until these African countries show up and mm -hmm. show out, it's on mm -hmm. us to make it happen. That's right. That's right. right. And they've got, you got Cash App and all that. Can That's they do right. Cash App? Cash App. We got okay, sales. so y'all know because nobody writing checks much anymore. Now I want to make sure they didn't get confused. Form, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Thank that, so that, oh, thank you. 
All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Queen Aniva. Aniva, have an amazing day. And I want to say thank you to our special audience for joining us. And also those who are here live and those who are going to be watching this. Because this is available on YouTube. It's also will be available on other platforms um, as far as audio versions as well. This is will continue to be there. And so we want to thank you for tuning in. want to encourage you to remember to like, subscribe, and share with others and we want you to tune in next week okay next week because we're going to be talking about you as business owners you need uh, some type of way to keep those employees like it's hard to get people today that's resources you know you know one of the things people are not just looking for pay they're looking for benefits as well and next week we have one of the best financial advisors, benefit consultants. Check this visual out. None other than Melissa George. She is phenomenal. She has more than 30 years experience in this arena. And she's going to be talking to business owners on how you can have benefits for your employees without paying the costs. So if I didn't catch your attention, I hope this will. You want to sign in next week. Be here. Join us. And with all that said, again, thank you so much for tuning in. And we wish you and yours the best of everything great. Bye now. This has been another episode of Wealthy Sisters Radio. Thank you for joining us. Catch the full hour encore Thursdays 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern and 24-7 at WealthySistersRadio.com. The opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of our host, staff, or partners of Wealthy Sisters Radio.